Hi, I'm Keith Kelly. I teach middle school at Nokomis Regional Middle School. So I'm doing these professional developments on STEAM, science, technology, engineering, uh, art, and mathematics. But I'm kind of showing you how I implement it into my program. And I'm going to show you some really, hopefully, practical tools as we go. I teach middle school up in Nokomis. I do fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Fifth graders, we do, we build cars and boats and do teamwork. Now, my last pre presentation, I, that's what I focused on. I will point out if you go to the steammakers.education, that's a website that has all of this. So, though that video from last time is here. So, if you want to catch it back up, it's right there. I went and edited it. So, it's edited for time, a little bit shorter, it's more consent. Anything missing for links is there. I have a curriculum there. I have my newsletter will be pop popping out. During the summer, it's kind of stuff will kind of slow down a little bit. There might be one or two newsletters pop out or a couple of things. I'm going to do one more about some summer reading ideas for you guys. And then next year, the year, once a month, the PD will keep, keep happening. And I'll keep working away through the program. I've kind of showed the curriculum, kind of showing you where I'm going to go with it. In this today, we're going to focus. Last class, last time, we focused on the teamwork, the collaboration, learn, defining roles, master builder, academic assistant, inventory control. I also tried to show you a really practical application. I showed you Flipgrid, which is a way to the kids capture video in a STEAM or hands-on classroom. One of the hard things is how do you capture process, not just talking about uh, just they say, oh, I did this. I built this. Here's the final. Well, how do you show the process as you go? So I used the uh, video, the webcam, Flipgrid, short little videos to, to have the kids show me the building process. I'm going to show you how you do it for virtual stuff too, for coding, things of that nature that are, are web-based. Well, how do you show that? Have them show that that work. Uh, so when after the fifth grade, that's what they do. They've learned teamwork. They've learned roles. We rotate the roles, rotate the groups. So they start to learn. When you're in groups, it's sometimes having all the same type of skill sets. So if everyone's an artist or everyone's a mathematician, sometimes you want mixing. Brother and I work really well together. We have complementary skills. He's mathematical. I'm more musical. He's more software. I'm more hardware. So we talk that to the kids. And in my process, they get to start picking their own group. Now, today, we're going to kind of move on to communication and digital communication and kind of take that groups to another level, the virtual level. I have put over in the chat, I put the link to this presentation, this slide deck, which again, I do put in the website after the fact. So the last slideshow is there. So all the links are there too as well. I have Lego trainings because we're going to end up talking about the Spike uh, Lego, uh, the robotics that I do have and I use. I have separate videos on those. There's four of them I did for the MLTI program, the CS program, and that's available too. They're, we're not going to watch them all go as detail over, but they're all there for you as well. I will try to have a feedback form, form at the end. So if you have any, you're, you're like, oh, I really wish you would teach us this, or I'm missing this link or something, feel free to you know talk to me about it and I'll add it to it. So we're now going to switch over to communication and my curriculum goes, you know, level one, uh, level two kind of moves up to level one's more of the experience of the real basic stuff, the digital communication, the teamwork. Um, that's my fourth and fifth graders, sixth grade and on seventh, we're in a kind of level two. And now we're going to go communication. And when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about verbal, physical communication, but all too, the more the digital. Now, this has been something that's been interesting is when we first started this, this was, it was new to the kids, but now the kids are so used to virtual after the COVID experience, they don't think anything about, about this video conferencing that we do. That was a skill I had to teach them and go over with them. So that kind of has gone away. But again, being able to do it doesn't necessarily mean you can do it appropriately trying to make something autonomous, something independently work on its own is a really high level skill. It's something that's kind of difficult to do. So we work that with the kids. So uh, they're going to do coding. They're making a robot, not just do something, but do it on its own without you standing there. Do it. It's same as kind of as a teacher with your class. I have built up my kids now because they had the teamwork from last fifth grade. The, the groups, they come right in, they kind of start looking for those groups. It becomes kind of autonomous. I don't have to sit there and set up the class every time. And it builds on itself. The other big thing I add is I add asynchronous grouping. And what I mean by that is they, they work in groups, but not in the same class. One thing that's happened uh, with us when we're building and uh, working in a classroom, a lot of times we don't have enough materials. I didn't have when I first started a Lego kit for every kid or a robotics kit for every kid. So how do I, I can either do it one class, especially with robots or building, they have to build it. They don't want to 
build it, tear it apart, build it, tear it apart. They never get to kind of that higher level building. Everything's one off. In fifth grade, all the cars were pretty much built and the boats were built once. They used them. We were done with them. And then they just so the next class could come in. In sixth grade with the robotics, I end up trying to make it so that they can build their own. Now, the state's been nice with the MLTI program. Now I have one to one. But I started this with not enough. I started literally with eight. So I would do groups of uh, groups of three. The other problem that you have is if you're not careful, um, the, the kid, one kid builds it and the other two stand there and they don't touch it. So you can define the roles like we talked about. But by doing asynchronous, what happens is the kid comes in, one kid builds, they get the kit, they have to communicate with their two other group mates from the other two days I have them in class so that every time a kid comes in, they're in front of something building. So this doubles up your numbers. If you don't have, I started with you know two kits, three kits, eight kits, then I went to 20. So that 20 kit was running all three classes were building on it. And they'd have to talk, oh, I got to step seven, I got to step eight. So that's the asynchronous. And we'll talk more about that too as well. So, and we're trying to integrate this coding, this communication in with what we're doing. It's not something separate. It's something that it's part of what we're expected to do. If you can kind of see when I did, I'm doing this presentation, I have my links and I have my stuff all there to connect, to give it to you. It's not, oh, I, it's, it's after the fact. It's here it is right now. So we have to integrate it. Now with STEM, you know, we're talking science, technology, engineering our art and our math. And again, just like this robotic hand that I've been showing you is a hand, a robotic hand is, is really difficult to do because you not only are having it do things, grab or touch or whatever, also like hard or soft, that's a really hard thing for robotics and computers to do, also work together. So now it's not independently one finger, it's all intermixing. So that's kind of with STEM in my classroom, it's inter intermixed. We're going to define STEAM, STEM, and I'm going to, I, last time I talked, I did a bridge, today I'm kind of doing through the robotics, gives you that kind of overarching kind of concept for it. And then we're going to think, how does this link to our subjects, our science, our math, our social studies, English, all of those, and practical tools. I always want to give you a practical, last time I kind of talked about Flipgrid and uh, I use Google Classroom and I use Google Forms. And today I'm going to kind of expand on that a little bit more. Classroom application. How does how do you use it in the classroom? I'm not trying to talk everything just way up here. The bloom stack on me something high. I'm trying to say, okay, here's the high concept, but here's how we actually do it. And today our focus is is really just going to be more on digital communication. So today we're going to talk focus on digital communication. Last time was collaboration. Today is that communication piece. So as we talk about it, STEM. Uh, curriculum that we're talking about. So I've done fourth and sixth. I really, we're talking about teamwork roles. We're now into application and iteration. We're into sixth grade into that level two, and then we'll work our way up through as we go. In level one, it's all teamwork. So we're focusing on how do, what the roles, how do you work together? I will point out, we are learning some science, some math, simple it's machines, friction, and we're learning Newtons and as we go. But a lot of times it's, we're trying to get them to makers, manufacture something, apply the knowledge I give them, they test and do that through their effort, and then can they redo it? So we test, we build a car and we test what gear ratio the best, and then we actually do a race. Who can make the fastest? Who can make the slowest? Who can make, pull the most weight? And then boats. And then I give them a demolition derby car to try to rebuild, so try to reiterate. And in our level two that we're gonna be talking about, in our uh, level two, in sixth grade, we I've talked more about digital communication. So I'm going to use my robotics that I built with, and I'll talk to you about how we kind of fix those through. And again, iteration, application, tripod. We kind of use some of the same. It's learning from success. So it's a little bit of repeating the process. They still build, and we still, but we have challenges. I will point out as we go, I start to give a little less and a little more open. So we go from here's detail instruction, try that. The only open part is when they actually are building like the demolition barrier car. I have some requirements, but then they can build. And when we get here, the requirements kind of get a little bit less. It's a little bit more open till we get all the way to eighth grade. Seventh grade, we're going to go talk about our level two, our production, and we're going to go through the set, uh, skateboards. I'll be doing that in my next presentation for next school year. And then eighth grade, we get into our level two, but we're into design and prototyping. So that's where we're kind of coming from, and this is where we're going. So I'll stop for a second if anybody has any questions. I don't think so, so I'm going to move on. So 
Last time we learned from success. And what I mean by that is they were trying to succeed. And when they succeeded at, they made their car be the fastest, they would look and say, oh, okay, that's why it, why that guy won. And I keep track of that. And then they can see, oh, like, for example, I keep track of who in the groups win and they win some simple prizes. But what also happens, they see, oh, this kid won four in every group. Why? Well, they work better. They, you know, they listen, they follow directions or stuff. So now today, this presentation, I'm going to talk more about learning from challenge. So what happens is I give them a thing to build and they do some testing, but then I say, okay, here's a challenge. Who can do this? And then the other thing that happens if you do this, it gives you the ability to, you'll have some kids that are really fast. Some kids are slow at building. So what you do is by having this, they get the kids who need to build and take a little more time. And the kids who can go faster, you just give extra challenges to, extra competitions to be able to do. Now, again, the same thing I was last time I spoke to you, I'm going to try to be platform agnostic. So I'm talking to you, but I'm not saying it has to be Apple or Google or Microsoft. The tools I use is, it happens to be tools. I use what works for me. Some of it's I'm used to it, but also some of it is it's just easy. Use. And stuff has changed over time. Like when we first, when I first started this, I was using little digital cameras that then had to be uploaded. And I was using a web album that would slide through you know, and I was using blogs but stuff updates and now the cameras everything goes right up it's so much easier i'm using you know classroom mixed with uh, uh flipgrid and i used to flipgrid was i used to use google meets more so it runs or zoom it runs like we video is more my new thing that is uh, more of web-based editing so i have to do extra stuff but so i today the video aspect any of these would work i'm just going to show you a couple of them in the over here in the coding can you scratch? You can you code.org. I'm going to use the Lego education section that goes actually with my robot. But I will point out the stuff I'm trying to show you. You could take out the, the Legos or take out the robot and put the something else in. And it's the same concept of the asynchronous grouping and the digital and capturing their work using video still works. It just happens to be using that. So the practical applications I'm going to talk to you again, classroom for your management, forms for collecting your data, and video, this is a little different than the last one. The last one was just, hey, video, show me the process, introduce yourself, little short clips. This one video is actually screen capturing, showing me the work. So it's not just saying, oh, I did a research paper and here's the, the links at the end. It's, oh, here's the video of me going and finding all the links or here's the video of me doing the actual coding. So that's a little bit different than last time. So workflow management, it's the same thing. I, I happen to use Classroom for collecting my students' projects. Uh, this is my class, one of my, my, my Spike Rhino classes is what it looks like. So the kids go in here and in here is, oh, that's the introduction. And then what happens to my class is uh, Rhino Robot, for example, we have the worksheet, they have a Flipgrid video, and then they have a Google form to answer the questions that go with it. So here's the classroom. If I go to classwork, you'll see I can, and I have different things here, but let me start with the Spike Rhino. So in here is the worksheet that they get. This right here is from the Legos website. Lego has a nice little lesson plan. Oh, I just got to shut. And so they show a little video and they say, okay, we're going to teach you how to do this Rhino. And we're going to teach you this coding. And we're going to teach you how to do this brain puzzle. I can unclick it and you can watch it. This is a good day. The kids watch this and this is what you're going to try to build. And you're going to try to code it and get it to be working on its, on its own. I have the kids watch this. And then these are the questions you see here that it's asking. It's showing you the coding that they're going to do. And it takes them through each one of these steps. That's in my classwork right there. I've taken that and I've made a Google form. So I'll open this up for you. This is a Google form of that thing. The kids go and they record, they say what period they are. They tell me what box they are because again, we're sharing a box through three. And even now with the state, I have more, I can go to one one I'm still going to do this as a project. So still going to do async and grouping. but they would go and tell me, oh, there I'm in box one. What assignment I'm doing? Oh, I'm doing the spike rhino. And then this is, oh, period one, my team member. This is my, uh, my name. Okay, I'm, I'm from period A. I'm from period B. They would find their group mates. 
So, you know, and that's the worksheet that I just showed you. That's this right here. That's the same thing right there linked. But the difference is now here is the questions for them to answer. So if you see through going this, if you scroll down and scroll up through, you'll see there are questions built right in. I have them answer them as they go. So they go in here and they answer them. The cool thing about this is now I have a spreadsheet where all that work comes to me. And also you can have points and they can know. And some answers are have specific numbers. So if you go in and say, okay, it has to have this number, the kid will know. And that, this kind of helps you, but it takes away your time correcting the minutia. You're just looking at the actual answers. And again, this is just a Google form that comes to me where the work, and that's right in classroom right here. I have a flip grid here. So you can see I have a link to a flip grid. So this goes to flip. I'm gonna use my, the kids will log into their account. And now they can record the difference though. So I'm gonna hit the record button. Last time I showed you a little bit with the flip and that was just recording. But this time I have them screen capture what they're working on. So over in the right hand corner, there are the three little dots when you're in Flipgrid you say record screen, you select the re screen to record. So in this case, I'm gonna do the Lego spike and I'm gonna say share. And now you can see right here, I'm recording this. So when my students click in and they go to their prime and they start their build, they either do their tutorials or their home and they, okay, they're doing a new project. So they're doing the Rhino. They either pick their icon blocks or their word blocks. Let's say word blocks for now. They go and say, okay, we're going to create this. Notice this is recording this whole time. So the kids, not are, now they're showing me, oh, okay, this is how I'm making the motor move. And I will point out when you, you're you in here in the program, it shows you exactly, there's that coding that they want you to copy. So when I go back here, I could copy that. And again, it's being recorded. Now I've set my video to be only a set length. I don't have it be like insane amounts. Back here, you hit stop recording. Now you can, so you can hear it talking, the kids can do it and they hit next and I get them in collections. So I'll say, okay, I want you to show me your work for that little part. Now this is using flip, Flipgrid. And again, when you hit next, you can give it, the kids give it, oh, it's the Rhino assignment too, their thing, hit post. The cool thing as a teacher is it comes to me in a list with all, so I'll hit post and all the assignments, I can look and bang, bang, bang right through them and check them as I want to. So you can see there's that. And as a teacher, when I'm looking at it, there's that assignment. And again, I can, I'd see all of them. I can also set, I've set it up to moderate so the other kids don't see it unless I want. I, as they get older, I start to open it up and let them comment on each other's, uh, on their work to show. When we get to the free build in this program, I, I open up so the other kids can see, oh, this is a cool idea what you did. So you can see like, this looks like when you click on it, you can see there's that one we just did and I can watch it and I can, I can go in here and I can pin it. I can, you know, all that. It's kind of, it's really helpful as a teacher to do it. All right. Uh, I'm going to go into flip and I'm going to stop sharing that. And I'm going to go to flip and I'm just going to close the flip out. Now that's me using the flip grid to do it. So I just talked to you, did talking to you in here. So I'm using Google Classroom and you can see what happens is I have, it ends up being three. I have a worksheet, my flip grid and a form. And then when we go to the bike, I have a, my manual worksheet, a form and, a, and the video. And we just keep going the same thing. Now you can also use, you, you don't have to just, you can use like Google Docs to do the share or other docs, Word doc to have them share that way too. It doesn't have to be through a form or the video too, if you want them to talk to each other that way. So that's the class, that's the using the Google form. You can see I have, you know, this was Spike. I have uh, the uh, bike one. I have each one that I've, I've done. I'm just gonna close these out.
Now, this is the software I'm doing the coding and the kids are doing the spike coding. They're dragging, their, when it's the movement, they're dragging the movement out. It's all puzzle-based, so they have to stack. The thing they find with this is there's some consequence if they don't follow the directions. They're like, Mr. Kelly, it's not working. And while well, I'll say, well, let's look at it, the picture shows that these need to be in this order and you have it in the wrong order or you don't have them touching or that type of thing. So this is the where they do the coding. I'm using Google Classroom for collecting and forms. And then I use forms for uh, collecting my work like I just showed you, and that's for grading. And they kind of look like this is what they'll look like when you have them done. For video, I use Flipgrid, but I'm also, you can also use, there's tons, there's uh, Sna Snagit, there's Snap, I'm sorry, Screencastify. You can use a Google, your Google Meet, you can use your Zoom, you can use your FaceTime, you could use any of the video capturing tools to, to do this. The difference is I'm kind of getting away from the video, me talking to more of here, screen capturing. So I'm going to jump to Wii Video so you can see. So if you go, Wii Video is really cool. It's it it's kind of, uh, it's fairly new. It hasn't been here forever. Wii Video is a web-based video. I will point out web-based video editing does suck up a lot of, a lot of memory and a lot of were you know, so you, I wouldn't have like Google Earth and a whole bunch of things opened at the same time. The cool thing is now when you come in is you can assign this right into classrooms and you can add classes right from your Google Docs, your other ones, and it'll have them all in there. I'm just going to go to a project. I'm going to create a project just so you guys can see. And I'm going to do more of this later, a little bit when I get to my eighth graders and more advanced, but. Basically, the way video editing works is you have tracks. You have, you know, the more tracks you have, they stack on each other. But what's really cool with this, and this is your viewer over here. This is your bin when you have media come in. And down here is where the video, the media will be. And you can split it and move it around. We'll come back to this in much more detail. This is just, but you can use it for screen recording. So you can see I can hit record and I say video and I can say screen. I can say web just the webcam, or if I want both, this is that video where you see yourself in the corner. You can say screen and webcam. I got to allow it access and permission. And then what will happen is when I do hit the, when I do record, it will screen capture in the corner what I'm doing at the same time. That way, if I want to, I can go and do the same thing I was doing before, but this time I can have myself sitting in the corner and talking to it as well. If you do just a screen, you could say, okay, what, what mic is it gonna use? And okay, I'm gonna record again, the Lego spike screen, I'm gonna hit sh share. And now you can see it's doing the same thing as the last time it's recording this screen, okay? So everything I'm doing is being recorded and it's in there now when I'm, so if I move things, I drag things down. I go to my different concepts here, my different choices, it's light, sounds, all the different, as I stack them and put them in, it's recording this movement. So this helps because sometimes kids will do things and I'm like, I can't figure out what I say. Well, record what you have and show it to me. And I can say, oh, you've got it messed up. It's not working. So I'm going to stop sharing. Now, if I go back to Wii Video, you'll see. So I'm going to hit save. And it's going to dump that. Now I have this recording and I can drop it. And this gives me some ability. This is different than Flipgrid. Now I can actually like split it in pieces. I can trim sections. I could edit it. And we'll come back to this more. But I'm just, this is a quick and easy string. And again, I just did recording. Screen capture a video would have me sitting in the corner on how to do it while I'm talking. If you want to see the face do it as well. All right. So I'm going to move on from this. but And we'll come back to this more detail as a tool. I'll probably, as we get, when we start for the next one, I'll probably do a couple tool only PDs just because of the fact that this could take an hour just going through this, this tool right here, the two tools, the flip and this, you know, but I want you to realize what they are. You can use docs if you want, can use word processing. So it doesn't have to be as fancy too. Like, so I've had kids, if I click on this, this is a, a just a Google Doc we shared, and the kids would go in and they went and took pictures. So what they did is they'd say, we did it with a blog too, because blogs was really helpful because blogs do it by date. So as you did one post, it moved up. A web page, you could do it that way too. So you can see the kids took a picture and said, okay, I like this. I did this flat front. Um, here's the directions. Then this kid said, okay, I've this is the progress part one. This is my progress part two. 
So each class would say, this is what we built. This is how we build it. This is what we're working. I need to do this. You need to do this for a section. Did you try to code it? And again, you can do it all that way. There is, uh, Docs has building blocks and has literally notes, product, uh, product uh, roadmap. So if you click on it, it will give you a nice little breakdown. So you can say, oh, part one, I didn't start it, progress. You know, so each kid can say a note. So you can have, there's some built in tools like that built right in to these, these, these web tools. This is a good one. I'll have kids go and do it. Uh, you have review tracker. This lets you review. Okay. Did you get this part done? Did you not? Again, it's up to what the kids want to try to do. And again, that's just a simple doc. You don't have to get as fancy if you want, but the, it notices asynchronous. The kids are talking to each other, not at the same time. So one class, the kid builds and says, I did this in the other class. So they know their challenge, you know what they have to do, but they have to do it in pieces. So synchronous versus asynchronous. So in fifth grade, we kind of, they come to class, we do everything's here, it's very little done outside of the class. This one, we now start having asynchronous. So stuff is done at different times and they have to communicate with each other. And again, anytime you have any questions, you can post there. So it's 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 an interesting adding what i like the, the asynchronous i didn't realize it's a skill set to teach them because and it's actually we you need to teach them because they've done it with uh, they've done the video meets and all that but doesn't necessarily mean they know etiquette you know we've all been in meetings where you know someone doesn't realize oh mute your while you're talking or raise your hand or or you can ask questions read the chat or oh or for presenters like oh i forgot to put the link in so you guys can't get access that type of thing and this is something the kids need to learn and see how it's done too it's not just us the kids might need to see how it's done too as well all right so from learn from challenges now i started i i did i've been doing this for a while i started with my first robots with using mindstorm kits and basically what would happen, because the they used to have, you have the first Lego league and the challenge. So they do a challenge of it. So you could, it's a great way. I recommend buying their kid every year because it's a great way. You can't buy these Legos for as cheap as that kid is. So I always buy one of these kits every year just to get the Legos. But they give a kid out and like this challenge. And then what I did is I gave the kids their robot to build and they have to compete in that challenge. Uh, I find for me, I'm only, I only see the kids for a trimester. So it ends up being less than 20 classes. This is a little bit too intense because they use this for the challenge. It's like a yearly challenge, but you get that concept of here's a challenge, try to bit, And it can be like track me for your robots. It can be robot wars. Like you're going to see, it doesn't have to be just using this. So my kids would build, this became more independent and then they would go build. And at first, hey, can you do it? Show it to me. Oh yeah. Now, um, cool. Now, some of that video is not as good because it's an older video. We were doing this with the camera. When we first started to do it, coding, you could code, but it was pretty uh, tough to do. So we then became the Bluetooth for controlling it. And then later on, you'll see with the, the Lego spikes, they do it all in the coding. Okay, let me go to the next one. So what I started doing, they would build in asynchronous groups, they would build a robot that you sumo, you make a square and they're either trying to push the other one out or dismantle it and then they would control it. The cool thing is each one would build an ad. So what, uh, what would happen is kids would divvy up roles, products to do, assignments to do. So it wasn't like fifth grade where they were roles. Now it was, you build the drivetrain, I'm gonna build the arm, you build the structure, you, know, you figure out how to get the wires, that type of thing. When it, when it moves, it puts the arms down to the charge. And so you just run the program? It go, yeah. Like Will it drive off the table? Probably. But okay. So this robot, it wasn't controlled by a controller. It was controlled by the robot. Again, autonomous. That's a hard thing to do. So they had to make it so that they could just drop it, drop it in and it would just run what they were going to do. So they got a bunch of time to build. The good thing is every time we go in class, a kid wasn't sitting there saying, oh, no, because they all, no one else was in the room in their group. So they were, had a chance to sit and build. And here's a sample. And then what would happen is they would watch one and they would find out, oh, someone came up with a good idea. Like you can see, and you'll see it with BattleBots. Sometimes you want to scrape them off and lift them. Some it's a lift, some it's a dismantle. You know, and the funny thing is you could never tell which robot would win. 
the robot you'd think would wouldn't win would because it was so loosey goosey would win and others wouldn't. They really kind of, they really enjoy. The other two is you get the reiteration because they'll go watch someone do it and go oh and come back and fix their their robot. We also did some mass melees. Uh, some of it was a mixture of uh, so they would they would do the robot wars, but with where everybody's in there. So now this is a controlled version. So there's four or five against each other. So then you started getting the teamwork building up together. And I point out, you hear the laughing, you hear that they get the excitement. I, you don't get that in typical ways. So this is, again, uh, larger groups. So what we do is we have winners for the classroom. This one's more the style where they, it's programmed. So they, their robot had to be autonomous. It's going out and it's all doing coding on its own. So some of them had robots that would spin on, you know, they had to fit. And they also, if you see there's some sensors, like uh, this middle one here has a sensor, the red light, you'll see a dot on it, it where the yellow plate is on. It's touching the table so that it doesn't drive off the table. They had to figure out how to make it so their robot on their own wouldn't drive off the table. So that, you know, that's one kind of concept around doing it. So you can kind of see... So then you have a winning group. And again, this group worked together, but they were never in the same class. So they built this robot, they controlled this robot, but they worked independently of each other, asynchronously. So they had to talk to each other. This was really early. So this is back in docs and stuff, not so shared Google Doc, nor not a Flipgrid video. Nowadays, my kids are sending little videos to each other because sometimes what they find is sometimes a text can't explain. Video can't always explain. Sometimes you need text. So it's a good way to show them um, different mediums uh, have a reason. You don't, you don't just always text somebody. You don't always talk to somebody, so, you know, that type of thing. Now, we also did, this is something you can do too, is teleoperations. Uh, this is a great one to kind of even the playing field. So we did some where the robots are in another room and it's like Mars Rover and you're controlling it, watching cameras. Now, uh, we just used this, did this using laptops and webcams sitting around and we had meets or you can use a Zoom and have it up. And then the kids, you have one person they can watch the other and they're controlling it from a distance. Now you could either do it, uh, this was controlling it from a controller, but you can also do uh, autonomous, like they would be in Mars. They got to be able to uh, work on their own or if they lose signal, what do they do? That type of thing. We do this with drones too as well. So we'd put them in the room. These laptops are just sitting there, they're running cameras. And it, you know, we'd be watching it from the other room. So here's kind of these robots here are being controlled by people that aren't in the room. Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh Ooh. god. Spinning iron. Oh, oh, traction. Friction becomes a oh, 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 oh winner, winner. And Again, that robot, some kid people watched it, how it was built was totally up them. And again, they're controlling it completely from a distance. So the kids manufacture, they applied their knowledge through their effort and through reiteration, trying it out again. And that makes them makers. So, and again, in this, they are doing science. So we had touch sensors that did force. You have light sensors and distance like ultrasonic distance. So they had to say, oh, I don't want to drive off the table. So that some kids put their light sensor down. So if it changed color, it would turn around. Some did the touch sensor. So if the touch sensor, as it was pushing, if it all of a sudden went off the table, it would turn around. Others did distance, like, oh, the distance from here has to stay. If it changes, turn around. So again, all that sense of, again, science is what we're doing. Technology video conference, you can see this one. So you got two cameras, you got these laptops all around and the person's controlling them. And again, virtually talking to each other, asynchronous. Engineering, they had to integrate those with robotic control. So it's not just building a robot, but how do you make that robot stay together in balance? And then how do you protect the gears? And then also how do those sensors interact? So that becomes a whole engineering problem. I always throw in English because they did technical writing and manuals. This is a very different. They're, they're reading, they're looking at the pictures, they're reading very specific ways of doing it. 
art, you can do it so that these, uh, they could draw. We have Spiros and stuff that you can draw and paint with too as well. So they are doing spatial reasoning with that. And math, they're doing measurement because the force and weight. Some of these kids had robots that if it hit a certain, uh, when it hit a certain touch, it would jump or move and the arm would spin at a certain force. Some had to learn they, went, they were too strong. They'd break their own machine up versus going against others. So they had to figure this out. I did, I'm still keeping these mines so I'm going to keep using them because it's low if I'm not so worried about them breaking. The new stuff is the Lego Prime set that we have. And you can see we have, I have a whole bunch that the kids can use. And then I'm doing the same kind of concept. Uh, I've added a few things of webcam. So there, I do mix. I do some where they build their groups. So they built their rhinos together physically uh, in the same classroom. And then when we get to the spike, they did it asynchronously. I'm sorry, we get the spike. They got the picker groups. And then when we get to the final free build, it's totally independent. And again, and that would be for our robot challenges. So they still do groups. They're still doing coding. So they're using the spike. That's the thing I just so, showed you. For the Rhino build, the Rhino is our first build that they do. So this is the first part of the spike Rhino. This is the part that's going to make it go. Now we're starting the coding sequence of our uh, rhino. Now the rhino is cool because it has multiple parts. So one kid was building the head, one kid was building the body, and you could have another kid working on the coding. And then the next, when we get the spike to the bike, we just flipped it. Who was responsible for what? So you can get to a point where all three have done the coding if you need to do it that way. So you'll see that one kid will learn how to spin it and code and another kid will learn and they'll stack on each other. They will look at each other and steal ideas from each other as well. Now, I the challenge I had, so they had to build a rhino, they had the form and they did the worksheet that you I showed you. They and Once that was answered, their challenge was who could drive their rhino closest from the one end of the table to the other, turn around and come without falling off and do it the fastest. So what happens is the kids who are still building time have building time and then the kids who want to do that can do that. And then you can just add another challenge, like, and then you have some competition. So here they are building, here's the challenge. So the rhinos drove from one edge, had to get there, turn around and they drive to the other end. And the, the amazing thing is when you do this, you'll this, that one problem will have five different ways of coming up with the, the answer and can be just as fast or just as quick. It becomes a balance issue. So this is the same thing, but it's in, in our free build, the challenge. So now they had to make it. So they had to make it not only the, so the kids that got done the rhino, I said, okay, now do it, but I want something to move. So you saw that helicopter moved after they built a different kind of style. And again, they're mixing the groups. So here's another challenge of, can you make your robot weave? And that was all autonomous, right? So they're, they're, they're hitting a button and telling it to do it without them. That's kind of what happens with the, the Lego spikes. I kind of want to mix two where one's the controller and then one's more the autonomous robot. The bike build, so they build a bike same from the same kit. Again, this one was more so their group mates aren't in the same. So someone was building the bike, the, the bike rider, someone's building the bottom, and then someone's doing the coding. The same challenge closest to the edge, or I've added a, this is where, so some kids got to this challenge and we're done. They get faster as it, as they go. Funny, you'll have kids come to you and they're they're asking specific measurements because if you do this challenge, it becomes like you have to really time it and the force and really make sure it's like right to it. So it does, having these challenge makes them be better at the coding. So you can see how close he got it. And, it did. and he had to do a uh, reiteration. He had to test it and fail, test it and fail. And the next, Next section uh, yeah, I'm going to do is talking about how you use that failure to teach them with. Now, the other thing, too, is so I had some kids that were done that. I added who can climb the steepest angle so and not fall over. 
which you sometimes you think some of these are easy, but they're actually kind of difficult. So again, you can see now they're trying to add weight and balance and figure out how they can get that code. And they want just enough of the code so it comes and climbs, but it doesn't fall over. Ready? So if we look at the angle, the challenge is to try to get it as high, what's the highest angle you can get and still have the, the robot go. Oh, you're getting there. Oh, hers is coming up. So you can see, and then what we do is we just can keep increasing the angle. And then they have to do measurements to it to match, okay, how that, and then it becomes a matter of balance of weight and weight distribution and also support, that type of thing. So you'll see this one over here. And some you can see the way he's doing it. it oh. What the heck? I need a new piece of cardboard. Yeah. Oh, look at that. The black backflip. <laughs> Now, once they see one kid work, they'll 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 feed off what that kid work. You can see that one that it, it's, it's flipping. Then the last thing I do is I give them more free build. This is kind of same in fifth grade. I give them a demolition derby, but within current. This one's more. I let them have an open build to build with what they what they want to do. Now we you can do a free build, but have it be a challenge or find items, uh, ways, things to build. What I like to do is like I said if I do that robot wars, what I'll do is I'll they have the base. And then I'll say, okay, you got to make an arm or whatever, because you just got to be a little careful of them just copying somebody else's coding, but if, or I'm sorry, someone else's uh, build. But I would point out if you have these challenges, they can copy it, but then you say, oh, you have to code it. And because they're not going to find code to work in that uh, battle bots. And so the free build works too for the kids who are, you know, have gone past. Now I have enough that I can do that. I wasn't able to do that with the Mindstorms, but now I can. So they'll go and play around mess around with something. Sometimes they look at stuff that's out there and mess and try to build that. Sometimes they create like this, this person, this girl came up with her own, totally her own thing. So this is your free build? That's you your free? Them. Yeah. So they go fight to the yeah. death almost. So you can see they, she, again, this was all her. I have never seen this built. So, you know, she came up with this idea, messed around with it. If I give her more time, she would spend more time on it. Uh, and then you can find higher level stuff. So this is a, uh, a Rubik's Cube solver. So it's it's solving the cube. No, right now it's scanning oh, the cube. scanning the cube. Oh, I see. So what that does is they build this unit. And you what happens now, this level, you're now getting intolerances. If that, if that Rubik's Cube is a little shift forward, a little shifted back, it's not in there, right? I've seen it where it flips it, thinks it's flipped it, but it didn't. So then it's it's, it's like not solving, it's unsolving it. What it will do is it, and also it's using multiple sensors. You've got a, a color sensor that picks the colors. It spins it and goes through all the size and picks the colors. You've got the uh, eye, the ultrasonic over there doing a distance issue. There is a touch sensor in there. What it will do too is, and then you got a couple motors. Once it's gone through and checked all the surfaces, all the different size, it then using Python, using some programming, it does the math because there's an equation to it. Here's the colors. Here's how you would solve this. If the colors are in this configuration, here's how you solve it. Then it, what it does is the bottom one spins and holds it and, it and it solves it. So this is a little bit higher level for building that. Um, and again, I have a couple kids that will go and do this from there. Let me just click past it. So they manufacture. So they, here's a pile of, of stuff now and what starts to happen when you get to that end one it ends up being here's a pile of legos you figure it out especially with the free build i'll i'll look at them a lot of time they get tired mr kelly saying i don't know figure it out because that's something and as a teacher it is another level of stepping back and letting them mess around and, and mess it up but we manufacture we apply a knowledge and then we do our effort and then we reiterate we try it in a different way. So they've done a rhino. They all did rhinos. They did a bike. They all did bikes. And we get the free build. They're all building different things. I mean, they're having to, I, when we get to those free builds, I said, well, I want it to move. I want it to be able to interact with a sensor. So they have to, uh, they might have to use the touch sensor. They might use the, the light sensor. They might use the distance sensor. And then they might only use one mode. They might use two, um, and, you know, depending on what they're going to build. And that makes them the uh, makers. So again, even though this is just, we're still doing science, I'm doing touch, force, light, distance. 
those same sensors are there. Just, I will have to say the new sensors are a little bit more up to date. There is a gyroscope built right into it. There is some audio. Uh, it can even, the light can track. So there's tons of cool measurement ones. You can make the robot be a measurement tool, things of that nature, force, the distance force, the light, the distance, the, the, it is pretty cool. The things built in now, the technology we're now adding screen capture video. So now they're not just doing a video. They'll do some video of their building, but they're also like screen capture, the coding, how you do it. And later on, I kind of add up where I down the, down the road where they're actually curating this, like they're taking a video and they're editing it, but this is more seven, eight as we get a little bit older. Um, and also like going from just saying, hey, this guy would do to explaining it to me versus. And then engineering, they're integrating senses with robotics control. So like this is a, a grasper. They had to figure out, okay, how much touch do I do? And then when I tell the touch, how do I make that motor open and close? That type of thing. So they're, uh, you're adding, you're starting to add tolerances. Um, you can, It's not just like, oh, it'll drive, but oh, this falls apart. It doesn't stay together because, or the balance when I'm doing the competition. English, same thing. They are doing technical reading and writing. You'll actually, a little bit, one, they have to know the, uh, there is a syntax to, to coding. There's a language to coding. Now, we this level is using blocky coding. So it's all picture-based and it's all like puzzle-based to stack on each other. Python and stuff is the text-based, but, the, so the, but there is a syntax to it. There is a flow. There's control tells you to do this. Events tells you to do this. So learning that is part of the technical reading. Art, we, they do have, there's art. One, there's some light, uh, understanding how light works. We also, this is a root robot. This, uh, they code this and this does on the marker board. So you can, it's like a Roomba for your marker board. It can clean the marker board, but it also can draw. So you can have a perfect circle. You can have perfect Venn diagrams, perfect. So you walk away and they, and it can actually read colors. So you can say, hey, do this, this, and this. So there's some spatial reasoning, some art, some coding, some coloration that is happening. These kits are very, very colorful. And that's for a specific reason. And actually when you're building sometimes that combination, uh, especially if you're using light sensors, uh, the light sensor can, we have the one of the sensors. So on the dancer that it can tell how close somebody is, how far they are, um, if it's light or dark uh, before it does certain dances and stuff. So it's pretty there. Math, obviously we're doing math through it from coding, but you're doing rotations, uh, measurements, force, weight ratio. So there is a pretty kind of uh, detailed math. Um, there's greater than, less than in this. So if your car, the wheel spins more than three times, do this thing. So you can, you could, that's uh, like the coding so they can have it set for, if you're trying to do auto, uh, autonomous, you definitely have to do a lot of around the math. I have got these videos and I've linked them in. So I can't go through everything, but this is literally a video of me doing step-by-step -step unboxing the spike kit if you want to get to that level. So it goes right through everything, like how to unbox it all the way down to like what the, what the, what the parts are, that type of thing. So that's one of the videos. The second video, and they're not very long. They're not very huge. This was how to set up your hub. It's like a nine video video all around setting up the hub, connecting it to Wi-Fi, all of that. And it goes right through the coding for you. This shows you kind of, oh, uh, essential box is a, a more of an elementary, a younger level box. So I kind of did a whole thing around this. If you would like to, uh, to see that, you don't, again, this is if you have that kit. This one is coding on kind of some of the coding I did. And I'll take a real quick to show you that, but this has all the coding. How, so if you want to know, how do you do the software? How do you code with the kids using the spike, the autonomous part of it? This, this is all here, this video, nice little video. I've, again, I did this all for the CSI. So it's all done for you. So uh, rather than me redoing it, it's right here for you as well. Just give me a second. And the last one is management. It's kind of talking about all this stuff, kind of saw a little bit of stuff that I'm talking to you about, but it's also like, how do you manage all these kits and stuff? And again, I did, I talked a little bit. Some of what I've come up with, what I'm talking about is because of necessity. When I first started this, I, I only had five or six kits. I only had, so what I would do is some kid, one class would start working on And when you're building, they would have to build. I, they couldn't tear it apart, start again. So what I do is have them build. And the other two classes, one was doing scratch and one was doing um, Pico Cricks. I had some other robots that they were doing. So I used that asynchronous or that different thing to be able to, to kind of 
make my robots count for trouble, uh, double trouble, uh, double triple so that the other classes could use them. And then when I went to 20, that way I said one kit would cover three kids, but in three different classes. Also, it got rid of the, each kid got to touch the, the robot. They had, and they learned who to work with and who not to. But this video is all here and it goes all over kind of more the management. So, whew, I know I talk fast. <laughs> so what I've just done is, so this is kind of the next one. So this is all around communication. So we're talking about verbal asynchronous grouping activities using digital communication, docs, websites, blogs, videos, building our groups, not in the same time or location. And, and independently, I will point out too, if you notice, fifth grade, I had detailed pictures. I was right there. They were doing it. Sixth grade, I give them the directions. I'm there, but they become a little bit more independent. So some can go faster, some slower. But, and again, I'll offer videos and stuff too, but it's there, it's on their a little bit more independent. That's what happens each grade or each level. I step back more and more till the point when we get to the eighth or when I'm like, oh, you figure out, you pick your project. If you notice in the fifth grade, I kind of, here's the parts, here's the directions, here's the test. Here's the project we're going to, the challenge we're going to do. You, the only independence with it now in sixth grade, here's the stuff, here's a project. The challenge has become a little bit more independent. And then there's a point where they get to pick a little bit more. And we, uh, you know, creating simulations and projects. And that's hopefully the digital communication. So uh, um, future, uh, we've got some more to do. We'll be going beyond. I'm, I, I won't be doing anything for the summer. I'm going to do some newsletters, uh, talk to you about a, a reading uh, that you would want to do. But we're going to go and do the next one. We're going to learn from failure. So we're going to talk about my skateboard program, but it's the woodworking. But again. It's not about the skateboarding. It's about the process. And there's a reason, like uh, learning from failure, we're going to talk about how uh, making, doing something wrong and learning from that and how you can kind of set it up for the kids to do it in a controlled, safe environment, but they still have troubleshooting to do. And the, the next one after that will be learning from necessity where you have a problem or something and they have to find a customer and they have to fix something and do that. And then we'll move on to the older ones, but that's kind of the big four I'm going to start with. The one I'm, and then I'll move on to older grades too as well. Um, thank you again. If you go to steammakers.education, that's where I'll put this stuff. This video today, I'll I'll take, I'll edit, I'll put there, I'll put my slideshow. I'll keep adding to the curriculum. Uh, newsletters will keep adding. If you have any recommendations, there there is a uh, feedback form link if you want to, or you can just in the chat, or if you want to talk to me, you can say, hey, uh, I want you more on this. I know like some of the tools I'm I need to. I might do a couple PDs just on tool base, like video, what do you, how do you do video, classroom management, what would you do, forms, Google forms, that type of stuff, like how to collect to collect data. When we get to 3D printing, there's some SketchUp or 3D modeling stuff to there. So I will be kind of trying to add stuff as, as we go. It will build onto it. This is more of the kind of the overall, and I've given you links. There is those four videos are really detailed about the Legos, and I'm going to add more as we get more, I get more specific to it. But thank you guys very much. Thank you very much. And I will post this later. That's so what we have it.